So, the crypto wars um, really uh, both led to the involvement of Phil Zimmerman in uh, cryptography and uh, created uh, difficulties for him. Anyways, Phil Zimmerman is not a cryptographer. Um, he is a political activist, and because of the the crypto wars, the um, efforts that the government made to um, restrict the use of encryption, uh, Phil thought that it would be a good idea if people had uh, available to them um, a uh, widely available and free uh, program which would allow them to perform uh, encryption and uh, various other uh, jobs that cryptography does for us. Um, and uh, uh, so he, he made pretty good privacy. Um, now, as I say, he's not a cryptographer. And uh, initially, he decided to create his own crypto algorithm so that, you know, nobody could say he couldn't use it. Um, and he uh, made one, took it to a... Uh, uh, crypto conference, um, and it was broken with embarrassing ease. Undeterred, he tried again, uh, created a new one, took it to another crypto conference. It was broken with embarrassing ease. And to his credit, he gave up. You know, when, if at first you don't succeed, don't be a darn fool about it. So, um, he did uh, then look at existing uh, uh, crypto algorithms, and um, so, you know, I, again, here, uh, Kirchhoff's Law comes back into it, you know, use uh, uh, known and tested algorithms, uh, don't rely on creating something secret that uh, you think somebody else isn't going to be able to figure out, uh, they are going to be able to figure it out, so, um, so he created uh, uh, pretty good privacy. And in creating pretty good privacy, he um, provided us with some additional concepts here. Um, uh, the first being hybrid encryption. Now, um, I mean, this is a, a fairly uh, obvious idea, and I don't know if it's uh, you know, Phil's invention exactly, but he did um, implement it in pretty good privacy, PGP, and um, uh, so it, it became more common, known, widely used. Now, we're going to go into it when we talk about symmetric versus asymmetric algorithms and the various strengths, uh, and the idea here is um, asymmetric encryption is computationally expensive, and uh, so what you do with asymmetric encryption is you encrypt the key. And then you use symmetric encryption to encrypt the, the bulk of the material. So that's, you know, uh, there. Now, um, he also uh, created an idea which um, has not been fully explored as, as widely as I think it deserves. And that is the idea of the web of trust. Now... We will get into public key infrastructure and talk about key management uh, in a couple of places. Um, but uh, the certificate authorities um, that are the basis of most of the uh, asymmetric encryption that we are using now are um, uh, based on a, a hierarchical model. Um, you know, you, you've got to trust uh, a certificate authority and you, uh, you know, trust that they are uh, holding things properly and not giving them away to other people and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the uh, web of trust 
means you can be as paranoid as you like. Um, you, you determine, uh, you know, okay, I have, you know, I am teaching you all about cryptography, so uh, all of you um, will uh, become experts in cryptography, and therefore I know that I can trust you with cryptography. So any of you that creates a, you know, uh, public-private key pair, we'll get into that, um, I can, uh, you know, attest to you knowing what you're doing and therefore being safe and secure and, and your keys being trustworthy. And so anybody that you attest for, I, I will say in, in my copy of PGP, is automatically trusted. Now, that's, you know, that's a quick way to do it. Doesn't involve a, a certificate authority, doesn't involve anybody else. And we know we can trust everybody in that. And even if you don't want to trust them at that level, we can make it as paranoid as we want. I would say, you know, perhaps that anybody that, that you know, that two of you attest for is accepted. Or, you know, four or ten, however many I want. I can set that up in my web of trust, but it automatically, because of your attestation to uh, the keys of, of other individuals that you know, that my web of trust builds automatically. And so without having a certification authority, I can set up a system that will establish the reliability of the keys that I am being presented with. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Phil got into trouble uh, because of uh, the crypto wars, and that was um, uh, the international traffic and arms regulations had uh, definitely been established at this point, and um, so it was illegal to export cryptography. Well, um, PGP got exported. It was available all around the world. Also, at the same time, um, he had used, as I say, publicly available algorithms um, he had used the, the RSA algorithm for his asymmetric uh, encryption. And he hadn't uh, gotten a license for it. So, you know, uh, RSA says, you know, oh, you're in violation of license. So he tried to get a license from them. They said no, because they probably already knew that the government was going after him. And they didn't want to be uh, caught helping him out. So, you know, he's in a jam. And the government is threatening to throw him in jail for exporting cryptography. So, uh, MIT uh, gets into the picture and they think this is a good idea. So they say to RSA, will you give us a license? And, and uh, RSA says, yes, as long as you don't have anything to do with that Phil Zimmerman character. So, fine. Now, there is a legal version of PGP in the United States produced by MIT. And there is the international version, which um, is available internationally, um, but cannot be used in the United States because it doesn't have a license for RSA. Um, but the MIT version of PGP can be used internationally because it is illegal to export it. So now we've got two versions. Uh, rather ironically, the only place you could legally use both versions was my home, Canada, because uh, we have an exception to the international traffic and arms regulations, so we can use the... Uh, we can get and use the, the MIT version, um, and of course we can get and use the international version because RSA's patent isn't good outside the United States. So, um, now, oh yeah, MIT also entered us into this, um, again, the government's still threatening to throw uh, Phil in jail, and he, uh, well, you know, so he's under threat. 
MIT Press again comes to his rescue. They publish a book. I have a copy. It's very boring. It's the source code for PGP. Now, it's a book. So according to the laws of the United States, there is nothing you can do about that. Freedom of the press. You are allowed to sell this book to anybody, including countries that uh, the international armed traffic and arms regulations say you can't deal with at all because it's a book. So now uh, the United States was faced with this issue. They were you know, threatening people with exporting software, but this book could be sold to anybody in the world, and they could just, you know, scan it and compile it and make their own crypto software. In addition, uh, the, uh, well, really, the, the, the fact that the, the crypto regulations got softened up was the crypto software manufacturers in the United States saying to the government, this is ridiculous. You know, all that this does is make sure that we can't sell software to the rest of the world. They're already making it. So, inherent problem. <laughs>